uh, online training series uh, on the digitalization of smart energy systems, which is organized by uh, three European uh, projects, uh, Irrigate 2, Synergy and Resiliate. It's uh, organized by the uh, EIT, the Austrian Institute of Technology, by me, Thomas Strasser and my colleagues, as well as by the uh, colleagues from the Institute Mihal Pupin uh, from Belgrade in Serbia, uh, Valentina Janev and her colleagues. Uh, just a few uh, guidelines and rules. So uh, we have um, uh, all of you are attendees, so you can uh, only listen, so you cannot uh, share uh, slides, but you should be able to ask questions in the chat. So if you have some questions, please put them into the chat and we will have a look uh, at them. Uh, and we'll, uh, yeah, Valentina, uh, Dea and Slavica will answer it uh, afterwards or during the talk, depends uh, what type of questions uh, it will be. Uh, as said, also the uh, the training uh, event uh, will be uh, recorded uh, and we will share the slides as well as the recordings uh, afterwards with you. So uh, as you know, we have uh, planned, uh, these are these uh, three European projects uh, that are supporting um, this uh, training uh, lecture series, online training lecture series during this week. And as already uh, outlined yesterday, for those of you that attended yesterday, we have scheduled four lectures, uh, each of them uh, maximum two hours long. Um, yesterday we had the modeling and simulation of the integrated energy systems. Today we look at the integrated energy services, server security issues and uh, analytical services. Presented by Valentina Yanev, uh, uh, Valentina Dimchenko, uh, Slavica Rakas uh, and Dea Jelic from the Institute Mihail Pupin uh, in Belgrade, uh, Serbia. Tomorrow and on uh, Thursday we have two additional um, lectures which are dealing with the design and the validation of cyber physical energy systems as well as the cyber physical test beds for the validation of large scale smart grid uh, applications. So that's my short introduction and uh, now it's my pleasure to hand over to Valentina uh, and her colleagues. So Valentina, the floor is yours. Okay. So do you see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, but it's uh, in the, I see the uh, presentation. Now it's in the present, presenting room. So uh, I think we can start with your presentation now, Valentina. Yes, thank you very much, Thomas. So my name is uh, Valentina Janev. I'm a senior researcher at the Institute Mikhailo Pupin. Uh, Institute is uh, affiliated with the University of Belgrade in Serbia. And I'm a senior um, IEEE uh, member. Also, in the last three years, I have served as a coordinator of the Synergy project that was funded by Horizon 2020 program. The name of the project is Capacity Building is Smart and Innovative Energy Management, dedicated to um, increasing the capacities and strengthening the capacity of Institute Mikhail Pupin with the help of two strong partners from Western Europe, so the Austrian Institute of Technology and National University of Galway or University of Galway. Together with my colleagues, I will present uh, results from, uh, from Synergy, but also we will talk about uh, related projects uh, because uh, we are um, building upon some results that have been uh, delivered also uh, in previous projects. We are advancing the technology readiness levels of the services and we are aiming for commercialization of, of the services. So uh, the timetable is as following. So first I will talk about motivation. So what are the challenges in the energy sector? I would like to point to some um, um, policies uh, in, from the EU policy framework, take into consideration that there are colleagues from all over the, uh, the world. Then I will uh, present and point to results of the Synergy project so the main result is the partnership that we have with uh, Austin Institute of Technology. So in this, um, uh, this series of lectures this week is a result also of this nice cooperation between uh, our institutions. Then um, uh, I will talk about some results also from uh, other projects. For example, um, for these two, uh, two examples that I'm going to talk, the second one is from Spain that was delivered in NEON project, the project where I'm technical coordinator. So the name of the project is Next Generation Integrated Energy Services. 
for citizen energy communities. And then my colleague there will talk about uh, some results from recent projects from uh, Synergy and React project. And my colleague Slavica will talk about results uh, of a project funded by a national uh, organization, Ministry of Science, Technological Development. Uh, so she will she will uh, talk about that result. Then we have time for questions, but I would like to encourage you to stop me if something is not clear and somebody would like to to raise the issue. I would as uh, we the time is limited. I will also point to publications without going so much into details uh, because we cannot cover everything in uh, 40 minutes. So uh, regarding the motivation uh, challenges in the energy sector, as I said, um, we are um, representing the Institute Mikhailo Pupin uh, and uh, we are one of the most successful um, institutions for Serbia when it comes to, um, uh, to research projects or innovation projects funded by uh, European projects. So more about the European projects that are currently going on or uh, have been finished in the last 10 years, you can go to this link and find out. So, uh, so some of the projects that we have completed and some of the running European projects are in the energy domain. So the, uh, the great motivation, the overall motivation, uh, motivation is to combat the clear climate changes and reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, in the last uh, also 20 years, uh, so renewables are seen as a solution for, uh, for the problem of a scarcity of uh, resources or um, or also um, volatile uh, fossil fuels markets so renewables are studied uh, in um, on a national level on international level and so but the legislation that have been um, delivered in the last uh, 15 years it's um, huge uh, so um, i would like just to point to some of the acts that have been uh, delivered in the last five years, starting from 2018 or 2019, Clean Energy for All, uh, an European Green Deal um, directive. Then we have, um, my background is, I, I'm sorry, I haven't, uh, it's IT. So I'm not um, um, uh, indeed electrical engineer as a background, but uh, software engineering and IT uh, in my career. So uh, very much involved in, uh, in development of solutions in different domains. And that is why it's important for us, the directives related to artificial intelligence, to, uh, to uh, management of data. So, and in the context of energy or in the energy domain is the energy system integration strategy, for example. Then other directives fit for 55 package in 2021 where the, um, with the aim to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55 percentage in 2050. So very, very high um, uh, goals um, to, to be achieved uh, in just uh, six years. So um, here uh, we are in front of us, IT specialists, data scientists, uh, we have to uh, deliver solutions for the energy uh, sector. So taking into consideration that, uh, for example, these applications are running with different components, the, the applications are fragmented. So we have to deliver a solution to, um, so that will work in real time uh, and will for the benefits of the stakeholders in the energy value chain or for the citizens. Uh, so uh, penetration of renewables or distributed generation as uh, also electrical vehicle uh, chargers increase the volatility and degree of uncertainty of power output from uh, and or power, power, power input to the grid. So or, or the data that have to be changed with the grid. So uh, solutions are needed. So uh, the new uh, smart grid services uh, that are um, built upon uh, big data or data that is coming from different sources in different uh, uh, formats from different components that are working on uh, uh, following different protocols so a lot of a lot of challenges on the i triple uh, on the uh, on the ict side 
So um, we have to uh, be an uh, expert for Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, big data. And we are aiming for delivery of platforms that are uniform, platform that, for example, that is running in Serbia can also easily support, for example, integration of renewables in Germany or in Austria or, or elsewhere. So as I said, uh, modernization of the, uh, of the electricity system in Europe so on one side, uh, benefits for the uh, for the holders of the or maintainers of the uh, of the energy system, but from the other side, we are very much concerned quality of life of the European citizens. So I, here, I would like to, to point to the directive um, to 2019. Um, uh, 944 uh, that is uh, introduced the concept of citizen energy communities and some of the results that we have delivered in the last four years uh, we, we would like to present today uh, here. So um, modernization of the electricity systems uh, uh, understands uh, moving from centralized system to decentralized systems. So in the centralized system, it, we had this, um, or we still have this uh, distinction between uh, production side, transmission side, distribution side, but in the decentralized system, so the consumption um, on the uh, on the consumption and um, is um, is uh, achieved by the local uh, renewable uh, energy, uh, energy sources. So um, what is produced uh, from, from the wind plant or for, from the PV plant, the goal is to achieve 100% uh, self-consumption. Here I am pointing to some of the Institut Mikhailo Pupin products. Uh, Institut Mikhailo Pupin is present uh, in the energy domain for 40 years. So we understand the problems that are in the centralized, but also we understand them the needs uh, or the, the challenges for uh, innovation of our products. So here we talk about view for SCAD system. It's uh, uh, that is um, currently uh, used uh, in the, for uh, monitoring uh, the um, almost 100 percentage of hydropower plants, 70, uh, 80 percentage of, uh, of thermal power plants in Serbia. And also this CADA is also uh, used uh, on the transmission side. Uh, and uh, also uh, we are now uh, looking for solutions for integration of different analytical services with our SCADA in order to, uh, to, uh, to uh, be ready for uh, creation or planning of citizen energy communities. So establishment of a citizen energy community of or such platform on top of or around our SCADA that will support citizens. Uh, it's uh, also linked to, uh, to legislations, national legislations. Uh, for example, at the moment, uh, Pupin is a privileged producer, but with the new legislation, also new actors appear. So we have ESCOs that, uh, that, and the demand response aggregators. So we, we have in this concept service facilitators, or we have investors who are looking for, um, for solutions uh, to, to achieve the goal of 100% self-consumptions to save, uh, to cost, uh, to save uh, the, the costs of um, production or to, uh, to achieve energy savings. Uh, so, um, as I said, uh, we are looking for, and we are look, uh, we are um, aiming for uh, defining new concepts uh, and technologies and services that will serve uh, energy generation that will help uh, the integration of renewables. But also, we are providing, uh, for example, demand forecasters for uh, for the. Uh, um, Calculate forecast the load, uh, for example, for the for the for the energy community that we would like to establish, uh, and also um, we are looking for techniques for uh, processing big data, uh, and techniques that are uh, built upon novel um, artificial intelligence uh, algorithms, hybrid approaches, and and so on. And um, as I said, uh, we are um, testing uh, the, the solutions 
I will uh, show you later. So we are uh, testing on building level or on district level in order to achieve holistic optimization of the use of local distributed energy sources and then to uh, propose um, approach for optimal demand uh, from for the for example for the um, users of or uh, members of the community so uh, i already uh, talk about motivation of institute mikhailo pupin we would like and with synergy uh, we are a regional center of excellence in smart energy management and uh, we have uh, com uh, completed a lot of commercial projects. More about the results can be found uh, on uh, this link. So in the last 15 years, we are also present in the renewables uh, market. So I would like now to point to results uh, in Synergy. So Synergy was a capacity building project, as I mentioned. So um, we established a partnership built upon uh, some uh, research innovation projects funded by European Commission, but we are also looking for exploitation of the results or uh, for clients uh, in Southeast Europe or, or uh, Western Europe. So um, the competencies of the partners are um, complementary. So our strategic technologies, uh, they are uh, strong on the grid side and they provide grid level expertise. So for, uh, for these solutions, um, complementary uh, uh, knowledge is needed indeed. So uh, University of Galway is providing expertise on the building side, and we are providing expertise on the data management and artificial intelligence side. side. So uh, my colleagues are um, very much experienced in building artificial intelligence services. Uh, so, um, I would like now to point to the leading clubs that are used in Synergy, but also that were used in Synergy, but also that are used in other European projects or for the benef benefits of the organizations. So, in uh, our state technology provided access to uh, two laboratories or two buildings, energy base and tech base. Uh, um, University of Galway provided uh, uni uh, access to, uh, to time series uh, uh, from Alice Perry uh, Engineering Building, and Institute Mikhailo Pupin uh, serves as uh, uh, testing for different services that uh, we are developing at our site. So more about the results in Synergy. So um, partners delivered lectures. So in the repository of Synergy, you can find uh, uh, different lectures for the uh, grid, um, a smart grid technology related to smart grid technologies or uh, energy efficiency building operations. So please go uh, to, to this link and uh, you will come to this search filter where you can se select either uh, smart grid technologies or energy efficiency and come to the lectures. For each, each lecture, you will find the presenter or the person who has delivered the lecture. So you can find more information uh, about the materials that if you um, uh, directly contact the, the institution. Now I will talk also about uh, some projects um, uh, that and results that were delivered in, um, in, um, in Synergy, but we are continuing with with the work in um, Project Omega X. So the uh, name of the project is Orchestrating an Interoperable Sovereign uh, Federated Multi-Vector Energy Data Space, built on open standards and ready for Gaia X. So here is Mikhail Pupin, Pupin and the campus serve as a pilot for testing the technologies needed for establishment, for planning, and then operation of uh, local energy communities. So uh, here are also uh, my, uh, the names of my colleagues uh, that have contributed to, uh, to these uh, technologies. Uh, so before uh, we go to, into detail and talk about the local energy community, I would like to point also to um, each, um, for example, a pilot or, um, or can, can be observed as an energy data ecosystem. So if, if for example, the local energy community pilot is built upon uh, four or uh, five buildings or uh, an additional three, uh, uh, 
100 uh, households, then these uh, users are create create uh, energy data ecosystem. So uh, in Europe, a lot is talking. Uh, we are talking today um, in the last three years about energy data ecosystems, and in these ecosystems, understand that technologies that are used are interoper interoperable. Interoperable. So on different levels. So interoperability is evaluated on legislation level or functional level or on, on then on semantic layer, semantic level, on syntactic level, or and then on component level. So uh, we uh, some of our uh, work uh, on uh, related to responsible knowledge management in data ecosystems can be found in energies. Uh, it was delivered uh, uh, two years ago. So what we are aiming in this big ecosystem in Europe for energy uh, solutions or for, uh, for modernization of the, of the system is we are aiming for a platform that will, for example, um, uh, as presented in the previous slide, uh, that is deployed at the Institute of Mikhailo Pupin, but we are supporting, for example, the um, integration of renewables on Iron Islands. So some, um, my colleague Dea will uh, present analytical services, for example, from that pilot. So we are aiming for this platform. This platform, in order to be interoperable, we have to follow the recommendations that for building um, uh, platforms in Europe. So um, this platform has to be a uh, cloud. I mean, many times it's cloud-based because we have to collaborate uh, to with other stakeholders. It's service-oriented, either uh, um, implemented the integration with REST services or MQQT broker. Uh, so we could have on the platform blockchain technologies in order to uh, to estimate, uh, for example, the, the distribution of uh, of savings, uh, and um, and and so on. So uh, many requirements for the platform, but um, we are on the lucky side because we have very clear instructions. So the smart grid architecture model was delivered. Um, by uh, by Sense Analytic Smart Grid uh, Coordination Group. Here we have uh, three uh, three dimensions. One dimension is interoperability dimension, domains, and so on. Following this distinction between the processes, processes on the market or on the enterprise level or operational level, or on the process level. It, it's easy for us to put to put the focus. For example, we are developing analytical service for the market. So then, the, our analytical service, who is part of the functional layer, belongs somewhere here on, on this diagram. If we are developing control alg algorithms, so this control algorithm will be close to the uh, to the. Uh, for example, uh, distributed energy resource because we have to control the distributed energy resource. And so taking this as a, uh, as a starting point, so our platform has to follow some recommendations, we have delivered or defined for ourselves around three years ago um, this, um, this, uh, this somehow um, vision of the architecture we would like to, uh, to establish here. And um, I, I, as I said, we have served Institute Mikhailo Pupin in many European projects where we are integrators and we have some parts of the platform. So, for example, we have the communication layer, your canonical data model to communicate with partners from Spain or from, uh, from Poland. Or, uh, but the whole platform understands interoperability also event vertical direction. That means something that is used in France or something that uh, models, uh, data model that are accepted by standardization uh, uh, groups, we have to implement on the functional layer and on the information layer. Uh, on the informational layer, I will point later, we are building upon uh, some uh, standards or, and we have developed uh, some knowledge graphs that are um, relevant for our use cases. 
um, and uh, using um, virtuoso uh, technologies uh, and virtuoso is in this architecture covers the, the storage uh, of, the, of the knowledge graph. Functional layer is built from artificial intelligence uh, services that communicate some uh, messages. Messages are passing uh, between them um, uh, in order to, to deliver benefits for the uh, clients. So now I'm uh, um, going towards results um, and what Istin Mikhailo Pupin can offer. So what we have been working in the last five, six years. So these services are in the domain of non-intrusive load monitoring, lo local and uh, aggregated energy demand consumption prediction, renewable energy sources, uh, generation forecasting, energy dispatch optimization, energy performance evaluation and benchmark. So the services are available in different TRL levels and they have been tested uh, in um, the different pilots. So more about the innovation services you can find, found, you can find, uh, can find on this link. So innovation solutions for in the project uh, synergy uh, and links to other related projects or links to publications. Now I would like to move to uh, our vision of um, establishing a self-consumption in 2026 for the Institute Mikhailo Pupin campus. For the Pupin campus, um, so uh, we have um, uh, received um, a small uh, grant, uh, part, we are part of the Omega X consortium, we have access to uh, all the um, novel concepts that are currently under development for integration or creation of data spaces for Europe. So um, for um, others that uh, don't know where Serbia is. Serbia is in Southeast Europe uh, and we are in the capital of, uh, of uh, Serbia, Belgrade. Campus is composed of uh, different buildings uh, and on the roof uh, of one of the buildings we have a PD plant uh, and uh, for, um, for planning the self-consumption there are space for uh, enhancement or extending the, the renewable uh, capacities for renewable generation. So we are also working in that direction for planning services, how to, how to extend the, the generation. Because currently the, um, this is a 50 kilowatt um, PV plant cannot um, indeed um, uh, satisfy all the demands uh, for the campus. Um, we are more than 600 occupants. Uh, the whole campus, uh, his, uh, pro, uh, there are three uh, heating alternatives for the campus. We have heating plant, electrical boilers, uh, and uh, we have um, AC uh, using electricity to heat uh, the surrounding area uh, possibility. So uh, this uh, configuration, so to, to have access to the SCADA, that is uh, collecting data, series of data regarding the, uh, the solar production, then um, yeah, data series uh, regarding the um, consumption of fuel oil, for example, give us advantage uh, when we want to, uh, to make some uh, calculations uh, for the possibility for investments, for changes uh, in the campus. So uh, that is why uh, we are using, uh, by the book, we are using a methodology um, uh, that uh, give us uh, opportunity to, um, to develop uh, business use cases. Uh, and for these business use cases, for example, in order to plan the decarbonization scenarios for the campus composed of uh, that much um, um, uh, facilities, we, we need the planning services. We have to establish the energy demand profiles for the campus. And so these business use cases rely on some system use cases. And behind the system use case, we, we have the analytical services. So analytical services or uh, for optimization or for um, demand profiles or load calculation. Then uh, also in order to install them and integrate the services with the operational SCADA that is monitor the infrastructure, we need the, uh, some research platform. So we are talking about um, integration solutions. 
So self-consumption, for example, for the uh, for the for the Mikhail Kupin, uh, we are uh, currently a privileged uh, uh, producer. But uh, in the legislation, um, we would like also not just for Serbia to deliver uh, solutions for consumers, and to uh, on the integration platform that I mentioned to install analytical services that will be integrated with the infrastructure. And from the infrastructure, we need the uh, renewables and we need the consumption uh, profiles. Uh, then uh, this can be in a, a more um, or, or a bigger um, local energy community. This uh, have, can be integrated with a provider of smart contracts this uh, provider of this smart, smart code that can be the DCO or another um, another actor uh, in the energy of energy. So, for example, one of the research that was delivered on the mind side flexibility uh, impact on prosumer is uh, also published in uh, energies a uh, few uh, years ago. So this is on the right side, the vision of elaboration of the platform that uh, we, are, uh, we are hosting here uh, in Pupin. So as, he, as it was in the uh, smart grid architecture model, here we have different layers. On the bottom, we have the infrastructure. So we have them for close to the infrastructure, we have inverter, we have PMU unit, we are collecting the data. On the, close to the, to the PV plant, we have edge computer. And for the, for the edge, we also need analytical services. So here we talk about an, uh, analytics on the edge. So uh, some of our results are published in this paper. So these results, uh, or uh, for, for example, for um, monitoring the, the infrastructure are communicated with the SCADA. SCADA is communicating uh, data with lower, lower resolution to analytical services and analytical services that are, for example, produce results or provide um, recommendations uh, for day ahead or for, uh, for they, they need indeed data with 15 uh, minutes resolutions. So we, we see here different analytical services that work with different type of data. So for this platform, so challenges are also uh, on the side of uh, integration of different energy uh, series. So series that are, um, for example, here with very high resolution and then a series that are in with lower, uh, lower resolution. And then we, um, if this platform, for example, these analytical services have to work with partners from elsewhere in Europe, these results are communicated via uh, via services to uh, to this global ecosystem that we mentioned previously so regarding the interoperability we have worked on uh, semantic interoperability using the model that i have mentioned uh, seam decut um, uh, so these are some uh, common uh, semantic models uh, but currently in Omega X, uh, we are developing uh, specific uh, semantic models for the local energy communities that are needed for local energy communities. Here, uh, we are considering also a, uh, in the infrastructure, not just the generators, we also have the storages, we have the batteries. Uh, so modeling is also for these components. So we have modeling for, for different components. Uh, the, once the ontology is, uh, is uh, agreed, for example, for this ecosystem or for Omega X ecosystem, this ontology can be used for, uh, for example, for an annotation of data, annotation of services, uh, and uh, can be used for uh, development of data wrappers, um, easily development of data wrappers, and. and and so on. So this is uh, one of the results of, uh, from another project, so the Platoon project. So uh, for the data that was collected, for example, on Pupin site, we, um, we tested the injection chain. So injection chain means we have the data, different formats, CSV or uh, MySQL or JSON or XML. So these data have to be um, uh, semantified or have to be annotated with semantic models. 
and we have description of the data sources, description of the uh, of the data, and a description of the, of the data, uh, so the parameters. And based on that, we have an integrated or unified knowledge base for, for example, for that pilot that is ready for um, data exchange in the IDS ecosystem, for example. So this is one of the experience that, that we did here in Pupin. We on the on the level of um, semantic interoperability. So uh, as, as I mentioned, we have different levels on this on the platform. So one of these layers is the semantic layer. So for the Neon platform, similar as we as we uh, described our infrastructure here in Pupin, in the Neon we have four four different pro, uh, pilots. So four different pilots, three different countries: France, Sp Spain, and Italy. So in different countries, different legislation, different legislation for what is, uh, for example, the concept of how the concept of local energy communities have to be uh, established. So uh, different, uh, when we analyze the, the use cases, when we analyze the pilot, it's more easier to, uh, to uh, discuss or agree on a solution on a technical level. That means syntactic interoperability, then on the, legal, on the, um, on the semantic layer uh, or semantic level, we are still work, uh, working, as I mentioned. Uh, then on leg, uh, on the legislation level also legislation level is the most difficult because uh, each country has its own role, rules uh, each country has invested for example and each of, the, of these pilots has its own challenges because they also have different configurations not on the infrastructure but different configuration of the investors for example different configuration of the um, so uh, vision or visions how how this has to be uh, somehow consumed or so uh, a lot of a lot of um, um, somehow question marks how to to resolve the situation so especially on the business layer so business layer is the top layer here so that is why I'm not uh, discussing today this business layer. Uh, business layer. I'm I'm more on the technical side. So regarding the interoperability. So this technical interoperability on syntactic level or on the semantic level. So semantic is the yellow. Syntactic is the uh, the level before uh, below that. So it can be easily uh, established with services. Uh, that uh, are integrated either via MQTT broker, via either REST services, or giving direct access to uh, to the partners to uh, write, um, for example, some data to to the platform. For example, on the top uh, uh, level, we have different local energy communities across Europe. On the bottom layer, we uh, layer here, bottom uh, row, we have four platforms that are installed on different parts of Europe. So we have, for example, uh, on Cyprus, um, our partner FOSS worked on uh, services for forecasting, um, uh, PV forecasting and demand forecasting. We at Institute Mikhail Pubin worked on the optimization side and then provider of the data was the local energy community in Spain. So different actors, different in the data space or the data uh, ecosystem, they have different roles. Some of them are providers of data. We and Pupin are service providers and um, of, of service providers are uh, partners in, um, in Cyprus and so on. So I will move more to, to this uh, demo or, um, or uh, this demonstration that we achieved in Spain. So in Spain, so this is um, um, uh, close to Toledo. So uh, Villa Canes is the name of the city. Uh, we have uh, access to five industrial facilities of the industrial park uh, Las Cabezas. And our partners who are on, this, on that side have provided us time series for, um, and um, they have defined the problems that are in their specific local energy community. So they would like to run a platform, similar as the platform as I presented previously, they would like to move the platform that is now at the Institute Mikhailo Pupin to Spain. So to have the same platform 
and to uh, to continue to use um, as part of the exploitation, uh, for example, the platform that I have presented previously. So um, the services, as I said, can be on one platform or can be distributed. In our case, for the Spain pilot, we helped the partners from Cyprus, partner helped with demand forecast and production forecast, and Pupin helped with optimization. More about the results of this integration can be found in this paper. Platform for efficient building operation and demand response flexibility provision that was promoted also at the Synergy uh, conference. So on for the uh, production and demand forecast, so APIs were tested uh, in their integration with the platform were tested. So on the um, side of the service provider, they have uh, a nice visualizations that can be accessed by the users. Users in our case are the colleagues from Spain. On our site, so the service provider, we um, had a role of service provider for dispatch optimization. The object, objective was to optimize dispatch of energy flows in multi-service storage environment with variable pricing and flexible, uh, flexi flexible demand. From the, uh, from the definition, we can see that we need a, a wide range of uh, data historical data or data that is currently um, used, for example, for energy prices, data for from the battery, for control of the battery, um, data or capacities of the generation units, uh, and so on. So um, here, the solution was uh, provided uh, by the energy hub approach that was uh, developed uh, Institute Mikhailo Pupin. And uh, in behind is a mixed integer linear nonlinear programming algorithm. Uh, and based on this, um, we have provided, um, uh, for example, on this slide, we can see uh, what should be the optimal uh, demand or the set points uh, for the infrastructure uh, based on the provided production forecast or the demand forecast that are running, as I said, on different parts of Europe. So for, um, for such platform that we are proposing here, uh, we have to install also KPIs or KPIs that will validate, validate the analytical services, validate the, the savings. So a lot of, a lot of KPIs needed in order to say, yes, with this approach, you can really uh, achieve 20 percentage of uh, energy uh, cost savings. So for each pilot, we are developing or we are um, defining the um, uh, KPI that are important, either economic, social, or, or environmental, or all pilots have environment KPIs, obviously. But uh, some of them are, for example, the French pilot was, was more on the economic side. Uh, so we have also pilots that are more on the social side. So in order to, for example, to, uh, to provide uh, for social buildings, uh, some benefits for the citizen and, and so on. So uh, behind uh, the, it's a framework for validation of the result. So different KPIs should be defined on the level of the pilot. KPI on the level of integration of the subsystems because uh, we said that uh, we are talking about infrastructure composed of different components. Each component has its own, um, its own, for example, KPIs. For example, uh, HVAC system have uh, KPI related to comfort, energy efficiency KPIs related to uh, to other um, uh, infrastructure or user en engagement is uh, is a KPI um, related to benchmarking service. If the the the, the, the for example, users are using them, um, the, the services they can um, or, or follow the recommendations, they can achieve uh, better uh, savings of the cost. And then we have KPIs strictly for on the technical uh, level. So for the technical level, we are, uh, we are uh, evaluating different technical characteristics of the services and the systems. Uh, for the user uh, engagement is uh, related to user behavior, 
energy efficiency, uh, we are um, evaluating the benefits in terms of optimizing users' energy use uh, by uh, exploiting the demand flexibility of the, the infrastructure or the energy efficiency of the opportunities uh, that are offered in, the, in this uh, with these systems. Um, and so, um, for example, on the level of the system, uh, energy efficiency, we are uh, we are looking on total energy consumption, pink load, uh, demand reduction, energy cost per year, uh, and and so on. So, um, as I said, uh, in order to uh, achieve uh, the economic savings, um, so with implementation of optimized solutions and cost savings uh, to improve the, uh, for example, uh, use of uh, the electricity from the grid and integrate the rest, um, rest um, res resources. So we need uh, to integrate a lot of uh, a lot of systems to, I mean, that is why in this um, presentation, the focus was on how, for example, such platform should look like uh, and one such platform or a lot of knowledge, know-how know have been collected in Synergy, but also in previous projects and in the currently uh, running projects in Pupi. Um, regarding the interoperability, a lot of, um, um, going, a lot of it is going on uh, in Europe. Uh, so we are part of the community that is um, developing uh, these uh, services. Uh, or the, this, um, these semantic models. So I would like to point, for example, on the platoon uh, semantic models that are now exploited uh, for building the data spaces uh, in Europe. And then I would like to conclude uh, that um, we are uh, aiming for uh, scientific exploitation. So uh, to, uh, to uh, we would like to um, be integrated um, in the um, in the um, European era uh, research area, um, and so we are quite successful. But sustainability is very important. So uh, and also the uh, the excellence is very important. So that is why we are aiming for scientific exploitation. But also uh, commercial exploitation is very important because uh, we would like indeed uh, to be also number one uh, when it comes to knowledge transfer from our institution towards the stakeholders uh, in, uh, in here in Serbia, but also in the surrounding countries and, uh, and Europe. So I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. If there are any questions, I will be happy to answer. If not, we, we, we can continue with there. Yeah, we have no specific questions in the chat. So if someone pops up, then I will interrupt you. Thank you. We can Thank continue. you. Yes, there, please. OK, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great, OK. Uh, one moment, there is now one. <laughs> Sorry for ah. interrupting. Thanks for the shared information. My question is about what kind of pricing uh, mesh do you, uh, are you are using? Uh, we are you, We are still developing the, these pricing mechanisms in NEON. So peer-to-peer, um, peer, peer-for-so peer um, it is still, I mean, the, um, the mechanism are under development by our partner um, R2M. So many thanks. I think we can continue with the next part. Thank you. Okay. I uh, think you. Uh, then I will uh, start. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us uh, for today's presentation. I'm Dea Jelic, and in front of Institute Mihailo Pupin today, I will present you uh, different machine learning approaches which we applied for renewable energy source production forecasting. <laughs> 
So I will start with a short introduction and motivation for uh, development of renewable energy source production forecasting since, uh, since I, I was not fully aware of what will be the audience. So it will be just a couple of sentences to to get the sense why why we need this kind of models. Uh, and then uh, the main focus of my presentation will be two use cases. Uh, one was uh, application of different ML models for PV production forecasting, and the other one uh, will be uh, forecasting of uh, wind uh, turbines. So uh, why we need uh, these models? namely uh, with the main goal of decrease of uh, burning amount of burnt fossil fuels uh, the penetration of renewable energy sources on the energy production size increases and uh, <clears throat> as you probably know in order to maintain a stable electrical grid it is of most importance uh, to have a match between the uh, demand and the production site since uh, renewables are uh, quite stochastic by their nature due to their dependency of different meteorological parameters, uh, they can cause uh, grid instability. And in order to make sure that we have a stable grid, uh, careful planning is required, which leads us to the necessity of renewable energy sources production forecasters. Within this presentation, and uh, as the like uh, mostly widespread topics, production of uh, photovoltaic power plants and wind power plants is common. Uh, so now I will start with the first part of my presentation, uh, which focuses on a PV power production forecaster. Uh, namely, the focus uh, within this research was uh, day ahead forecasting of uh, photovoltaic panels production, depending on different meteorological parameters. This is uh, understood as short to mid midterm forecasting. Even though they are uh, depending on a particular uh, forecasting horizon, uh, applied methodologies in literature diff differs a lot. Uh, for example, for ultra short uh, term forecasting, uh, approaches la like RMAX and similar models are common because of a high dependency of the previous and the coming production. When we uh, consider longer horizon, horizons from, from a couple of hours or day ahead to even longer horizons, uh, utilization of machine learning models uh, is more successful and is more common in uh, state of the art. Uh, here I, uh, I somehow highlighted uh, three approaches uh, which are present in uh, literature and were quite related with, uh, with our work. Uh, you can find various uh, neural network architectures uh, for uh, this kind of forecasting from uh, convolutional neural networks, recurrent LSTMs, also art artificial neural networks, etc. Uh, the most uh, performable uh, ones uh, were proven to be hybrid architectures, a combination of different layers. But also you can find the utilization of artificial neural networks uh, in ensemble as, as the approach uh, for solving this problem. Uh, before uh, going to the models themselves and showing you some results, I wanted to give you just a brief summary of the data we used. Uh, for this uh, purpose, we had uh, real uh, world data, uh, which we obtained within a React project from a day town in Tenerife. Uh, you can see on the right hand side that we uh, had uh, data from a PV plant which had capacity around uh, 40 kilowatt oh. but uh, the resolution of the production data was only one kilowatt so th this is why uh, th these are uh, discrete values 
Uh, we obtained data for a uh, year long uh, period, uh, year, year long period uh, for with hourly uh, resolution. And we also obtained meteorological data. Uh, this data was not uh, collected uh, on the uh, particular pilot site since there was no uh, no accompanying meta station, but we obtained data from Soulcast web service. Uh, this uh, data set contained various meteorological parameters such as air temperature, azimuth angle, cloud opacity, and different irradiations, which are the most uh, important for, for this kind of uh, models. Uh, since uh, PV is not producing uh, any uh, energy when there is no radi uh, radiation, we only took periods in which there is radiation and also production uh, for training and also model evaluation purposes. Uh, we remove different out, out, uh, outliers by analyzing joint distribution between production and uh, and uh, irradiation, global horizontal irradiation, and separate the data into uh, uh, three data sets. Uh, but taking care of seasonality, namely uh, for uh, this kind of forecast, seasonality takes uh, uh, place quite crucial role. And therefore, for each season, we took one month, which was used only for validation and test purposes, which were February, May, August, November. And uh, the data from the rest of months was used for training. Uh, days uh, which were odd were used for testing and uh, data from even days was used for validation. And now we employed uh, three different approaches. Uh, two existing ones were uh, some that I already mentioned, so uh, ensemble artificial neural network approach and also hybrid neural network uh, modeling approach. Uh, what we wanted to show and test was to propose combination of the existing approaches. So we created a sample of hybrid neural networks and uh, compared their performance with the existing uh, ones. The idea, initial idea was to exploit more powerful uh, architecture uh, of a single week learner uh, so that complex dependencies could be detected, but also to exploit ensemble method for improvement, for performance improvement on the testing and validation data. And now uh, I will show you uh, three slides with uh, separated uh, results for each approach. The first one, the Probably the most basic one is ensemble artificial neural network approach. Uh, we trained uh, around, uh, sorry, it was uh, 300 weak learners, and each of these uh, used a random of 80% overlapping of a training data set. Uh, under the same conditions. So we had the same optimization engine, uh, number of epochs, etc. Uh, as you can see in the top right corner, uh, optimal number of weak learners uh, was 150 and it was obs observed uh, by uh, comparing root mean square error on uh, validation data. Uh, you can see the performance in the two pictures and here uh, in the numbers, and you can also observe more details in the paper I put reference in the last slide for this part of the presentation. But uh, I just want to like uh, underline the, the biggest problems with this model. So you can see that peaks uh, were quite problematic uh, with these models, and that's where the biggest uh, error was uh, created. So when we had uh, the highest uh, production and also uh, the, the minimums uh, couldn't be catched precisely. Then we also uh, trained a single hybrid neural network uh, using uh, the same uh, optimization engine uh, and achieved around uh, 100 kilowatts better, uh, 100 watts better performance. 
Finally, uh, we also trained on sample of these hybrid approaches. Uh, we trained 200 weak learners uh, in a similar manner. So each weak learner used random of 18% overlapping of training data set. Uh, and uh, the optimal number of weak learners turned out to be 20. So a significantly lower number than weak artificial neural networks since these models were more powerful. Uh, the Optimal model achieved uh, 3.4 kilowatts uh, of load misburn error uh, on testing data. And as you can see, uh, peaks uh, were uh, estimated much more precisely and the performance was uh, better. So with this, with this uh, proposed methodology, we increased uh forecasting performance for uh, uh, around 100 watts and uh even though the performance on training data as you can see is lower actually on testing data set is is uh, higher and the most notable improvement could be seen in periods with maximal and minimal production which is quite important to not to under or overestimate in these periods since these are the most critical ones. This is the first part of uh, my presentation. And uh, the second part is uh, related to the wind power production forecasting. Um, here we also had a real world pilot site. Uh, this was uh, related to platoon. Uh, Horizon 2020 project. Uh, Kernel wind power plant uh, is located in uh, Montenegro and we collected also a year long data from there. Uh, this uh, power plant contains 26 wind turbines with different capacities in total 71.5 megawatts. Uh, apart from uh, production data, we also uh, obtained meteorological data from the uh, local met meteor station. So uh, we actually had pilot specific data, uh, the whole file specific data set. On the right hand side, you can see a comparison between the obtained uh, measurements and the expected uh, shape uh, of the dependency between the wind speed and power output. So you can see that the behavior is expected. Uh, in the first steps, we uh, had to aggregate meteorological data since we had different uh, time resolutions. Uh, we also had to carry out some uh, standard pre-processing with uh, taking care of missing values, uh, re uh, outlier removal, and we also carry out correlation analysis between the obtained data and the uh, power uh, wind uh, wind uh, pr power produced in this particular case we what we wanted uh, is to create a framework for optimizing neural network architecture for wind production forecasting in order to enable easier utilization of different uh, hybrid architectures uh, for future projects so the parameters that uh, we were able to optimize were number of hidden layers, their types amongst the LSTM, convolutional, dense dropout layers, a number of training epochs and the uh, learning rate. Uh, in total, uh, for the demonstration of the created framework, uh, we uh, sent uh, uh, 250 neural networks and uh, as usual, final model was chosen in accordance with the minimal root mean square or, or validation set. Uh, in order to reduce search space, which is uh, quite big in case of uh, optimizing uh, neural network hyperparameters, we had some pre-assumptions. Uh, the first one was that same, uh, same activation function was uh, used due to uh, output saturation uh, in accordance with the uh, wind turbine capacity. Uh, we had predefined rules when to include dropout layers after a specific number of uh, particular uh, other uh, neural network layers. And we, uh, for all training, uh, trainings used Adam optimization engine. 
the final model had uh, five hidden layers to LSTM, and one CNN, five dense layers, uh, and was trained to 500 epochs. And we achieved uh, 0 0.159 megawatts uh, of root mean square error on uh, testing data, which is less than 5%. So the prediction was quite precise. That would be all from my side. Uh, I would be happy to try to answer your questions in, in case there are some. Okay, I, I saw one question, so... Um, yeah, we have here one question that is, uh, how is the test data different from the validated data? And or the first, maybe I can start from the first one. What is the time resolution? Of time? Yeah. Uh, the resolution of the uh, measurements was uh, uh, hourly basis, so uh, of all uh, production data. And meteorological data, we had it in a 10 minutes time resolution uh, from the Carnaval power plant. Uh, whilst the, from Solcast data set, we also had with uh, hourly time resolution. Uh, how is test data different from validated data? So we, uh, for each of these, we separated uh, uh, different days, the uh, data from different days. Uh, for validation and testing data in order to, to not to compile them during the training. Uh, have you developed any model for PV uh, hosting capacity at the distribution level, like under transformer? No, so far we, we were focused on this one. If uh, we'll consider five minutes time slicing, do you think that forecasting play portable for the... Uh, sorry, if... We'll consider five minutes time slicing the frequency in play and important. I'm not sure if I understand the question, but um, there th there are uh, different uh, applications and uh, approaches for also uh, short term or ultra short term forecasting. Uh, so, yes, even for uh, five minutes, but these are much more uh, focused on uh, analyzing and uh, taking care out of the previous uh, production, both in demand and in production side. Uh, yes, uh, all the models were developed in uh, Python. Uh, and uh, machine learning methods, are they open source? Well, uh, all the models were uh, developed using uh, some uh, open libraries, but the models themselves are not open source. Um, is there any open source uh, for metadata? Yes, Soulcast uh, was open source. I'm not sure whether it was for research purposes only, maybe, uh, but uh, we uh, requested formally for, for this purpose and we obtained it uh, for, uh, it, it was uh, free of charge, yeah. Uh, the models are data-driven or physical modeling of the system. All these presented models are data-driven. Uh, thanks a lot for all questions. I will, uh, of course, stay until the end of uh, this. Uh, ah, there is one question, sorry. Can you elaborate uh, on the size of input vector and output vector for machine learning model? Yeah. Uh, so the output vector uh, was estimated uh, uh, power produced. Uh, so it was a single output. Uh, when we wanted to estimate with a horizon of 24 hours, we then estimated for each hour separately. When inputs are considered, uh, we took uh, various, depending on a particular model, uh, and even in uh, some 
other cases which I didn't have time to present today, but we uh, obtained different meteorolog uh, meteorological parameters. So the, our main focus was taking into consideration different meteorological parameters such as irradiation, uh, UV temperature, uh, cloud coverage and so on in order to estimate uh, produced power. Uh, can you elaborate about the ensembling? What uh, was that based on neural network? But you you have chosen other. I uh, know. So the uh, ensemble uh, learning that I uh, presented today was based on neural network. So uh, weak learner, each weak, weak learner was actually uh, neural network. And then the estimated uh, output was uh, average output of each single uh, neural network. Uh, <clears throat> so you optimize these predictions and then what you do with it, do you sell predictions or uh, do you uh, consult rest based power producers? Uh, depending on a particular use case, but for example, in case of uh, PV forecasting. Uh, this uh, particular project was focused on uh, sustainable uh, islands, uh, sm sustainable small uh, islands. So, in order to ensure their self uh, sustainability, it was uh, important to try to optimize their uh, local production and consumption. So on top of uh, these forecasters, we also had after that uh, optimization engine, which took into account uh, our predictions and also estimated uh, forecasted demand and uh, provide some uh, optimal uh, energy profile after which we also had a low level control of uh, batteries. We also had the possibility of, in some other projects of controlling some whole household appliances. So it depends on a particular use case, but we had some kind of control uh, on the end user side. OK. Uh, I will stay here so in case some additional question pops up, maybe we can answer in the end. Thanks a lot for your feedback and all the questions and uh, for the opportunity to present. Thanks, and I think we can move on. Hello, my name is Lavica, and I'm just trying to share my screen. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. Uh, but not yet see your screen. Uh, yes. I'm not sure why. Uh -huh. Here it is, okay. Now, can you see it now? Okay. Not really. Not really, okay. Mm -hmm. I will try like this. Do you see? No, I don't see it still. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I can ask Valentina. Yes, I will download. I will download. I will uh, send it to you now. Maybe it will be quicker. Okay. I'm not sure why it doesn't uh, doesn't work. Okay, I send it to you. Yeah, let's try it in that way that Valentina is sharing it. And uh, yes, I'm not sure why it's not sorry working. Sorry for this, this uh, issue. No, I'm but sorry. The, they can I, always happen. I'm clicking on the share button and everything, and I <laughs> choose my presentation sure. and everything, but yeah, it's not working. Okay. Okay, I'm sharing now. Okay. 
So do you see the presentation? Mm, no. Yes, but please put it into the presentation mode. Yes. Yeah, no, it's good. Please move on. Many thanks. Mm, I don't see it. So you see, all of you see the presentation? Not. Yes. 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 Mm. Uh, well, I don't know why. You can, can I come to you? Can yes, I come sure, to you? Sure. Okay, yes. Okay. Oh, so we are sorry for this. So, um, Okay, here I am, so sorry for this interruption. So everybody can see me and hear me. Say, do you hear us? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry. So let me introduce myself. My name is Slavica Bursinacic-Rakas. I come from the Institute Mikhailo Pupin, Belgrade, Serbia. And today I will present, uh, I mean, I will talk about the cybersecurity issues of cloud-based dynamic client rating. So uh, first to outline uh, some topics that I will talk about. First, of course, short introduction. Then I will discuss and introduce, describe what the dynamic line rating actually is. Then I will address the cloud computing used in such systems and of course, cybersecurity issues and uh, security countermeasures. And in the end, I will present our, our proposal of hybrid cloud-based dynamic line rating architecture and I will conclude the presentation. So, uh, the integration of uh, future internet technologies such as cloud computing, internet of things and big data analytics and so on with traditional energy systems, the all three parts of the, system, of the energy system, the production, the transmission and distribution make this energy systems intelligent or smart and they make them digitized uh, in order to improve their efficiency and to reduce the overall costs and to preserve or to even improve security, availability and reliability of the system. So what the dynamic line rating actually is, it is uh, a process of calculation of the transmission lines allowed current load, i.e. ampacity, uh, based on a large volume of collected data collected and analyzed data, the data regarding operating conditions of the transmission line and uh, weather, on-site weather conditions as well. Uh, these systems uh, enable dynamic increase of the power capacity uh, utilizing, uh, in order to proper utilize the transmission line capacity to prevent the conductor from overheating or to enhance the power system security, availability, and reliability. Uh, well, these systems, uh, dynamic line rating systems, are real time. They work in real time. They estimate the allowed intensity in real time, and the management of the overhead transmission lines is also in real time and relies, as I said, on large data volumes. So, the computer resources needed are significant. So, in these situations or in these cases, a cloud computing can come in handy due to its high performance computing resources and large memory capacities. And uh, these dynamic line rating systems, okay, is everything okay? Uh, the, the dynamic line rating systems can be helpful 
as well. Uh, when the number of renewable energy uh, sources is increased, because then uh, the power generation becomes highly dependent on weather and on weather and operating conditions. So in such case, these uh, DLR systems can be uh, can be helpful because they can increase the they can yeah they can increase or they can optimize the the use of the transmission line capacity and to improve operating uh, operating uh, security operating security they can improve it of the whole power grid so uh, this figure presents general uh, general architecture of the of these systems consisting of uh, dlr server uh, for, acquisition, for, for acquisition of uh, data and for calculating the, these estimations, uh, the workstations and measuring units. So measuring units consist of sensor unit and weather station. Uh, sensor unit is mounted on the transmission line and measures conductors temperature, tension and or sag. Uh, while weather stations measure air temperature, wind speed, wind direction and solar radiation. And they are usually mounted next to the sensor unit. They can be a part of sensor unit as well, or they can be in some relatively close distance. Uh, the data collected from these uh, units is sent to the DLR server, which determines the conductor, the allowed uh, conductor capacity, and forwards that information to control system, the SCADA system, for example. Uh, and this information can be stored in an appropriate database. Uh, workstations can be used for real-time monitoring of transmission lines, temperature and capacity, and they can be, and they are actually used for maintenance and configuration of sensors and weather stations. The main benefits that uh, this dynamic line rating system bring are the increase of the transmission system efficiency, then the operational flexibility of the transmission system, uh, then uh, improved utilization of the existing assets, which decreases overall costs, then greenhouse gas emissions can be uh, reduct, reducted uh, because of this integration of renewable energy resources, and the security of the power grid's operation can be improved as well uh, in normal operating conditions. So when we talk about the cloud computing, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, it can be helpful in this case when we uh, have large volumes of data, uh, that data that needs to be uh, used in real time so the, the high performance computing resources are in need and large memory capacities as well. So cloud computing can be helpful because otherwise uh, these um, needed resources can be extremely expensive. Uh, cloud computing offers users web hosted computer and storage resources. These resources, uh, uh, I mean, the users don't have direct or active management about these resources, and but they can access it via web browsers or applications while the data remain on cloud servers. So the main three uh, types of cloud computing are of, of cloud computing are well known: the public, private, and hybrid. Public public uh, cloud service services uh, are offered by third-party internet providers. They can be free or subscription subscription based. Uh, in the private uh, cloud services, the infrastructure is owned by a single organization, while data center resources uh, are on premises or uh, provided by third party. And the combination of the previous two, taking the benefits of both, is hybrid uh, cloud computing. Of course, uh, introducing the cloud computing to any system, especially uh, industry, uh, brings raises uh, some cybersecurity and um, availability and reliability issues. Uh, when we talk about the electric power industry in particular, we can uh, identify two main uh, 
areas of application of cloud computing. First one is information management and distribution, distributed energy management. And the second one is electrical distribution systems. In the first one, we can observe several benefits. For smart grid applications, uh, first one is provisioning of hardware and software resources that are needed for the big data analytics. And the second one is scalability and elasticity of cloud computing services can contribute to continuity and accuracy of dynamic smart grid operations. Uh, when we talk about the electrical distribution systems, uh, consumers can take advantage uh, with uh, web-based cloud platforms that can provide them with real-time information about the energy, their energy usage and about the cost of energy. And based on that, they can organize their energy consumption and reduce bills. In this uh, figure, uh, I try to present some uh, examples of possible of, of, or applicable cloud services and cloud infrastructures for DLR systems. So for example, uh, we can use some public or private cloud uh, services, uh, for example, for data management and data optimization. We can use public uh, cloud service like um, database as a service. So it is on the left hand side with green frame. And we can use um, compute as a service, which can be uh, implemented as public or private cloud service. And this um, compute as a service like Compass, uh, uh, it can be used for, um, for processing resources, for example, like some virtual machines and so on. Uh, so for big data analysis and for data visualization, we can use platform as a service uh, for storage, web hosting, network performance monitoring and high performance computing, we can use infrastructure as a service. They also can be implemented as public or private cloud services, but um, since we are talking about the power grid and um, systems that are really important, uh, the security issues in public cloud are not so great, so uh, it would be better to implement it as a private. And uh, finally, uh, a public uh, software as a service DLR application can be used for gathering geospatial data and for uh, gathering uh, data about the weather parameters. Uh, the main cybersecurity objectives are the well-known uh, um, CIA triad. But in this case, when we're we are talking about the power uh, grid systems, the order of, the, of these objectives is a little bit different. So first comes availability. That means um, that access to information is on time and reliable, meaning that only authorized users can access it on exactly when they need it. Uh, the second objective is integrity, meaning that uh, representing the certainty that the data has not been modified, intentional or unintentional. And in the end, confidentiality is also uh, important. And it means that uh, it means actually preserving authorized restrictions on information access and disclosure. And this data is accessed only by authorized users. Uh, so when we talk about uh, cloud computing and cybersecurity issues, important parts are, of course, cyber attacks. And in this um, uh, smart grid environment, uh, there are two main uh, types of attacks, passive and active attacks. They influence the before mentioned triad, availability, integrity, and data availability, data integrity, and data confidentiality. So when we talk about the passive attacks, they are harder to detect because they don't change the data. They aim to intercept the information about system configuration, architecture, and normal behavior. They usually influence data confidentiality and um, examples for this type of attacks is traffic analysis and eavesdropping. When you talk about active attacks, 
they uh, modify and transmit the data, so they affect the operation of the whole power grid system. They can affect the operation of the whole power grid system, and they mostly influence data availability and data integrity, but they can also influence the con data confidentiality. Uh, so when we migrate uh, a DLR system or any other power grid uh, part of the system to the cloud, uh, they faced a similar vulnerability uh, that face all other cloud-based commercial applications. But uh, in uh, this case, they are more vulnerable when public cloud services are used, especially when <clears throat> if the network connections between the DLR system and cloud is insecure, or uh, if the off-the-shell commercial solutions are used. So uh, uh, to overcome these vulnerabilities, it is important to, to implement different policies, controls, procedures, and advanced smart technologies to secure cloud data applications and infrastructure. Uh, there are four main categories of data security issues. First one is before mentioned triad, then authentication and access uh, control, broken uh, authentication session and access control, and finally minor data related security issues uh, due to data location, multi-tenancy, backup in the cloud. So to overcome this uh, previously described to tackle to these issues, uh, so how to ensure this first, I guess, uh, issue, data confidentiality, integrity, and availability in the DLR, DLR system. When we talk about the confidentiality, um, it is important in this uh, system because the output information, which is estimated intensity of the transmission line, is strictly confidential. Therefore, uh, some uh, encryption appropriate encryption algorithms are uh, necessary. Then to uh, ensure availability and integrity is also important because the, uh, this input and output data in these systems have to be unchanged and obtainable in real time. So to provide for this, um, uh, data can be classified. For example, it can be some sensitive data can be identified, some security policies should be identified as well, or appropriate access, me access methods for different types of data, and then which data uh, in particular can be shared. It uh, should be identified as well as uh, some corrective action plan should be predefined in case of data corruption. Uh, when we talk about the authentication, for ensuring authentication, uh, it is necessary for persons and equipment as well. And here are some uh, techniques for authentication that can be used, such as uh, username and password, single sign-on, biometric authentication, and so on. Uh, for ensuring access control, of course, firewalls are used, but uh, these firewalls could be co-located with intrusion detection prevention uh, system solutions at different network and cloud layers. Um, to prevent uh, breaking authentication, authentication session and access control, uh, there is a need of implementation of strong authentication and session management controls, uh, which are used to examine access from unknown and untrusted sources. So uh, here uh, is pre uh, we present uh, the proposed DLR cloud-based architecture. We can see that is hybrid. Uh, we use we, uh, we use public cloud services for uh, for gathering pub uh, publicly available information like weather uh, reporting and for forecasting. Uh, so it is used like software as a service. Uh, and we use as a private cloud service, we use platform as a service for gathering the data from sensor units, for data aggregation, storage and management, and for the process of this gathered data. And of course, of sending the process data to the control system, for example, SCADA. Uh, then uh, intrusion detection prevention systems uh, are co-located with firewalls 
They are installed at networks vulnerability points and they, they monitor the traffic and examine the activities of the network in order to identify and prevent suspicious activities in the network. They log event uh, information, notify about important events and generate reports. Uh, the interoperability between the DLR server and control system is achieved with the protocol converter and the main benefits of such, um, such architecture, uh, hybrid architecture is uh, on one side cost efficiency um, due to use of public cloud services uh, and on the, on the other side high level of security provided uh, by the private cloud. So to conclude this presentation, we can say that, uh, that introducing or migrating uh, this application to a cloud computing environment is relatively new business uh, strategy. So one should uh, uh, implement or yes, a profound analysis and assessment of the benefits and risk trade-offs. Uh, the DLR systems are very important of part of the power system because they contribute to the optimization of electric power distribution and provide an efficient power grid load management. They, uh, they run in real time, they collect and process large uh, volumes of data in real time, therefore cloud computing can be useful. And uh, we thought that hybrid cloud infrastructure could be a promising solution for such systems, bringing, as I said, uh, some cost efficiency and high level of security for critical applications that are executed in the private cloud. Okay, so uh, that will be all from my side. So if... Yes, next slide, sir, also for your part. Mm -hmm. We have time for some questions. Oh, I don't see questions, a, a, please put it into the chat here. Mm -hmm. Don't see any further questions. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, now one is coming. <laughs> Thank you for the information. Can you please share some platform or software? for a simulation of cyber attacks. Maybe you have some links uh, that you can put no. here in the chat. Uh -huh. We didn't do any simulation of cyber attacks. I'm sorry if I made that impression. Okay, many thanks for the clarification. But, uh, usually before we used uh, NS3 simulator and NS2 before that. but not in this particular case. Okay. Uh, a lot of cyber attacks are there. So for implementation and testing, only one of uh, one can be at rest at a time or multiple attacks can happen one at a time. Yes, of course. I think that uh, multiple can happen. But uh, we haven't implemented or tested it. So for testing, I think we, we first would try one at a time and then maybe increase. How much latency, latency we can be while working with cyber attacks? Uh, in this particular DLR systems, so I'm not sure really, but uh, there are really strict, uh, really stringent uh, um, metrics here. I'm not sure, but really, really stringent because it's in real time and because it's about uh, getting the optimal use of transmission line, it, it uh, should not be overloaded, you know. So the, the communication should be really fast. Thanks for answering that question as well. Yeah, any additional one? I don't see any. Yeah, then thanks again. And I think uh, 
Uh, many uh, thanks to Valentina, Slavica, Thank you, and Steve, uh, Valentina. for the nice presentations and the overview about the work that you did. Uh, many, many thanks. Uh, so that I think we're at the end of today's lecture. Uh, many thanks for joining and uh, you're kindly invited to join us also in the next uh, two days, uh, same time, uh, same meeting link. Um, and as said, uh, we share uh, after the end of the uh, uh, lecture series, uh, uh, probably at the end of the of the week, uh, all the slides and the recordings. So many thanks, yeah. and uh, hope Thank to you. see uh, all of you tomorrow. Many thanks. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. bye.